Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness and essentially this is a place where I like to geek out about my big passion which you might be able to see around me. I talk about tropical houseplants. So today is another installment in the plant review series. This is one that I'm getting some good feedback from everybody on the couple of videos that have been uploaded so far so I thought I'd continue with this. I might not do every single video as a review but maybe I usually upload two or three videos a week. Maybe once a week one of the videos will be a review. So today I want to be talking about the plant that you can see next to me. This is the Philodendron Splendid and I'll show you the backs of these leaves. You might be able to see a bit of a blush there and yeah. So let me give you a bit of an overview of what this review will be like. Normally within these videos I will go through a few key elements. One would be some background on the plant, background that I have seen since owning the plant essentially, and then I'll talk about speed of growth, ease of propagation, any pest pressures that might be coming along with this plant, and also availability at the time when I purchased the plant and currently. And I'll wrap everything up with kind of final thoughts and a score for my review. Now, these reviews always, and I always say this in my videos, and I will keep saying this in my videos because I know that some people might make the comment, are always going to be highly biased to my experience because I can only talk about my experiences with this plant and growing this specific plant in my conditions. I'm based in the UK, that means UK weather, and for those who don't know, it's grey, it's wet, and it's generally cold in the winter. And I'm growing in a conservatory, so that means higher levels of humidity that most people would have. Some of my plants on some of the reviews that I'm going to be doing aren't in my conservatory, they're dotted around the house and I can talk a bit more about regular household humidity in those situations and what effect it has had on the plant. Same thing goes for availability, same thing goes for price, that is all going to be very relevant to when I bought the plant in the UK. Generally the prices and availability tend to be similar between the UK and the EU. It might be different if you're based somewhere else. And in terms of pricing and availability, it's relevant to the situation and the time frame that I'm in now. So if you're seeing this in a few years time and you're saying, oh, these availabilities and these prices don't stack up to what I'm seeing now, check the upload date on the video down below in the description. You might see that this video is a bit old by that point, but a lot of everything else should still stand. Now, with these reviews, part of the reason why I'm doing them is because a very lovely follower on Instagram had said, can you do some reviews with this? I'd like to see how plants start off and also how they end up after a few years and talk about your experiences in that respect. And I always encourage all of you on any of these review videos, do consider dropping a comment down below if you've got this plant and you've had it for a while and you want to share your review. You don't have to write an essay. But think an Amazon review, think something that might be useful to somebody thinking about getting this specific plant. Now, without further ado, I probably prattled on a bit too much with the intro, let's go into the background. So the background of this plant is that I got it a few years ago now, I think this mother plant is probably about two years old, I would say now, or just over two years old. and. I got this, if I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong, I got this from Kaylee Ellen and the Rare Plant Shop back in the day. Now, there's been a lot of background on this plant actually. This is a plant that had it grown as expected throughout the whole period without any ups and downs. This probably would have been even larger and I've also taken propagations for this so by default it's a bit shorter than it would have been. Now, let me pop in a photo here of what this plant used to look like when I first purchased it. Apologies for the slightly bad photos. I hadn't planned this two years in advance that I was going to be doing these types of videos. So these photos, all of these earlier photos and all of these videos will be from a plant care app where essentially what I usually do with those pictures is as soon as I get a plant in, I take a quick snap. I'll create the listing on the plant care app that I have I'm not trying to make those pictures pretty. So a lot of the times they're not. They're just a reminder to me when I'm quickly looking at my app what the plant is. So, 
be nice, essentially, is what I'm saying. <laughs> They're not Instagram worthy in any way or form. But yeah, so the background on this plant is when I first got it, I put it in my light airy aroid soil mix. I was having some good results with a heat mat. I have since stopped using heat mats to rehab plants and I can do a whole separate video on that if you want. But essentially this plant did really, really well. It was growing really fast. It was growing big leaves. It was doing well and it acclimated a lot faster than most other plants might have done when they've come in the post. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I got this around either the very end of winter or the very beginning of spring. So in the UK, it was a bit cool when that came in. And the background after that point essentially is that that plant probably got too dry. Like the, the regulation of dry to moist soil was just not good essentially. And all the roots rotted and I had to start again. And I started again and I took it off the heat mat and I tried again and it rotted again. So that tells you something about what I'm gonna be talking on a bit further down the line in terms of ease. But I've managed to get it to grow happily. Interestingly enough, the only way that I've been able to do that, it really didn't like being in soil and I tried the net pot, I tried all of these different things. I'd be really interested if somebody else has got this, what their experiences have been, because I don't think that this is a particularly tricky plant in terms of rooting out for a lot of people but I struggled with it. So since putting it in pond, it's doing really, really well. So I've put it in the choose a pond and I am watering it as I would if it was in soil. I don't have a water reservoir underneath it because when I try doing fancy things like this, this one is one that really didn't like it. Probably the reason for this is the roots are quite fine on this plant. So that's likely why Having too much moisture for too long will get it to rot out. The interesting thing is, and I don't know whether or not people are aware of this, is that the Philodendron Splendid is a hybrid between two other Philodendrons, namely the Philodendron Melanochrysum, and you can see where it gets that kind of length in the leaves, and I'm trying to see some of the older leaves as well. We'll talk about the damage in a bit, but that's where it gets the length of the leaves. It's also quite velvety, and the blush that you get at the back of these leaves comes from the other parent, which is the Philodendron varicosum, and I'll come on to pests in a bit. But neither one of the varicosum or the melanocrysum for me tends to be a plant that will quickly go towards root rot. So this was quite a surprise to me because usually when you get hybrid crosses between two different types of parent plants, the hybrid generally will get the best genetics from both. So if both of them have got relatively strong tolerances against root rot, then I would have imagined the progeny or the hybrid would have been equally tolerant. That's not been the case, but yeah, but that's a bit of the background on this plant. Let's move on to speed of growth. So when it comes to growth speed for this plant, as I mentioned, obviously it's a hybrid. It does get that speed from the varicosum, I think. So this is definitely a faster grower for me than my melanocrysum is. Uh, it's probably a bit slower than the varicosum, but it's still a relatively fast growing philodendron. So in that respect, it's, it's one that's kind of a good all-rounder. It's not painfully slow. I'm looking at you, philodendron gigas and I will be doing a review on the Philodendron Gigas. But with this one, it's good. I mean, it's not gonna be a particularly slow growing Philodendron, but it's not gonna be the fastest Philodendron that you're ever gonna grow. It's still a decent grower. So a really, really cool one. Obviously you can see that it's on <laughs> janky support sticks. So this is one that does need to climb up. It's a climber, it's not a crawler. So bear that in mind. But then let's move on to the next topic. So ease of propagation, with, with this plant in terms of how easy it's been to propagate, I'd say relatively easy. I mean, you're still gonna struggle with the or at least I did, I still struggled with the same issues that I had with being very careful with the roots for it to not get any root rot. And actually, let me just pick up a propagation of this plant and show you. 
So in front of me, you might be able to see a propagate, which is granted a few months old now. So it's, it's a, a lot more bushy than you would have expected. So if I bring that in, you might be seeing one of the other features of this plant. And it's the fact that it takes that from the Melanochrysum and the leaves when they emerge, they're a kind of cool blush that they get from the pink backs that you'll get from the Varicosum. And they still have that gold bronzy feel that you'll get with the new leaves on the Melanochrysum. And actually, Again, the melanochrysum comes from a Greek word, and I can talk a bit more about this because I am Greek, and it's melano, which basically means dark, and chrysum or chryso means gold, so it's dark gold. So you can kind of see where the name originated from, because if you look at the melanochrysum leaves, they are that kind of dark goldy colour when they first emerge. So there you go, a bit of information for you there. But in terms of propagations with this, I have propagated this in pond. I think I'd started this in water and it did okay. I think I've started a few in soil. They didn't do that well. This is what I'm saying, soil for me, and it might just be this specific plant because I'm assuming any issue that I would have had with the mother plant, I would also have with the propagates because it's the same genetic material, essentially. It's a clone. But the one thing I will say about ease of propagation is this one took a while to get going and I did propagate it straight into pond rather than anything else with this one and it's doing as well as it is and for a very very long period of time I only had the two leaves. Granted I will say that these are relatively large leaves they're not a very small leaf so if you were taking a much more juvenile cutting and trying to propagate that potentially that might go a bit faster but this one took a while I had a bit of a failure with some of the caterpillars and the leaves coming out but overall it did okay and after it got established it's doing really well and it's quite happily growing in pond. And yeah, like in terms of propagation, it's okay. It's probably not going to be your easiest propagation, but it probably won't be your hardest propagation either. The other thing I will say is this is not a philodendron that has abundant aerial roots. So bear that in mind. And obviously do the usual things that you would normally do with propagating any plant is when you make the cutting, make sure that your, your instruments are sterilized and that you're letting it callous over before you put it in whatever media you're going to grow it in. So let's on to the next topic. So looking at the availability of this plant, and I'll start off by talking about how available it was when I first purchased it. So when I first got this a couple of years ago, as I said, Kaylee Ellen had it. She was one of the first few people, I think, that had this hybrid in a bit more abundance. There, was, there wasn't as much awareness for this. I don't think a lot of people were even calling it the Philodendron Splendid at that point. The name was out, but they were still talking about this as a hybrid Philodendron Melanochrysum cross. The, the, the name Splendid has become a bit more synonymous with this plant more in more recent times, essentially. But it wasn't a particularly expensive plant. I think it might have been mid to high double digits when I first got it for a two or three leaf rooted cutting. Essentially what it was, a little plantless at that point. And I don't think the price has fluctuated so much, so much now. Maybe a tiny bit cheaper than when I first bought it, but it's still holding relatively strong. I don't think it's going to drop significantly and part of the reason for that is the demand for this plant. So yes, there's a lot more people that are aware of this plant. There's a lot more people that are, have got this plant and a lot more people that might be providing this plant as cuttings or as rooted cuttings on different shops or on eBay. A lot of the times you'll see this, but I don't think the demand is quite there, which is a shame because as long as you kind of get the care of this plant down, it's really, really cool. It's very similar to the philodendron um, Glorious, which is the hybrid between the Philodendron Melanochrysum and the Philodendron Gloriosum. And that one does grow quite quickly. I've only just recently got a cutting of that. Obviously, you'll get the very large, more heart-shaped leaves that you'll get with the Gloriosum, unlike this, where you'll get the much longer leaves. So this is, visually to me, this reminds me a lot more of the melanochrysum. Obviously it's got that pink blush of the varicosum, but it doesn't have some of the struggles of the varicosums, and I'll come back to that. But yeah, in terms of availability, there's more of them coming around. I think there's more of them 
more people that are aware of this plant and are willing to buy this plant now, but I don't think this is going to be one that's going to exponentially grow onto the market. I might be wrong. But yeah, let's move on to the next topic. The next topic is the one that links to the varicosum, and this is the topic of pests. Now, with the varicosum, I'm not going to bore people to death because I think there's enough channels out there that are talking about how much of the spider mites, specifically magnet, the varicosum is. But interestingly with this one, I've never, maybe a dash of spider mites in the heights of summer, but it didn't grow exponentially to the same level that it will grow on or kind of like essentially pr proliferate as it does on a varicosum as quickly as it does on a varicosum. So definitely one that you can catch in good enough time and kind of deal with and it it's not one that will always have spider mites hanging around to start chomping down on leaves. Now I will say that I've had some mealybugs potentially on this one but not as much. I mean the people that have been here around for a while know that <laughs> in this conservatory I struggle with mealybugs a lot and I have tried everything including beneficial insects. Nothing has worked. <laughs> but this is one that unlike a lot of the other plants they're not as attacked by the mealybugs that I have here. Interestingly enough the varicosum that I have, all of the varicosum cuttings that I'm propagating are like the be all and end all for all of my mealybugs. They tend to be the thing that every mealybug wants to focus on which is really interesting because they've got hairy petioles. This one doesn't have the hairy petioles that the varicosum has, so that's really interesting. I think it's very similar to, yes, the melanochrysum doesn't have the hairy petioles. And I would imagine with the hairier petioles it would be an inhospitable environment for the mealybugs that need to attach to something because obviously all the little hairs that are coming out. But interestingly enough, no. And actually my melanochrysum doesn't really ever struggle from mealybugs, so there you go. But overall not a particularly pressed prone plant. So good to know. Let's move on to the next topic. And I'll wrap up now with some final thoughts on this plant. Would I buy this again? Did I have a chance? So if I didn't know what I knew now, or actually no, if I did know what I knew now and I was looking to get a plant like this, would I get it again? Probably. I would have done things slightly differently. I wouldn't have used the heat mat. I probably would have gone, if I could, as straight as I possibly could into pond because it seems to be very happy in a semi-hydro environment like that. And yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not necessarily the most straightforward philodendron that I've grown. And again, if your experiences are different from mine, I think I might have got a dud. But I'm, I can only talk about my experiences with this plant and ironically enough, even the propagations, as I've mentioned, that I have of this plant are still coming from the mother plant. So if I've got a bit of a dud, all my propagates will be a bit of a dud. It's still a beautiful plant and now that it's growing those bigger leaves and all of the texture and the fact that it's a lot easier to grow those big leaves is not as fussy as my melanochrysum, for instance, but it doesn't have all the issues that the varicosum have got, that's where it benefits from having the best of both worlds from the parents. Now, in terms of if I had to score this plant, so out of 10, 10 being the best, zero being the worst, I, I maybe would give this between a six and a seven, and that tells you something. And it's because I struggled with my specific plant, and I don't want to assume that all of them would be the same, but if they are all the same, that is why I'm taking off as many points as I am. The points that are staying on there, the good points are the fact that it's got low pest pressure, it's relatively easy to propagate, it is visually stunning, and after it gets established, it's kind of not particularly fussy. I don't know 100%, don't quote me on this, but I think I've seen on a couple of other people's pages when they've shared about this plant. I also don't think that this is as temperamental with humidity, I might be wrong. But yeah, that's my score on this plant, I think, really. I don't think I can do any better with this plant, just purely because I've had so many struggles with it to begin with. But since then I've fallen in love with it, and yeah, I probably would buy it again, because it's kind of cool. But anyway, I've prattled on for far too long. Hopefully you've enjoyed. 
As I keep saying, if you've got your own experiences, do drop it in the comments down below. I'd love to see your reviews of this plant as well. I hope you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And yeah, I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.